All right. So we're now in InfoWorks, and as you can see, we have recreated our project in here through the model builder. So in this hypothetical project, we're just going to go to our proposed road area in here. In this hypothetical project, what we're going to do is we'll try and lay out some road in here. As you can see in the imagery, it's already existing. But in this project, that isn't just yet. So we'll try and lay out a new road in here and we'll assess the drainage requirements of that particular road. So to start with, what we'd wanna do is go to analyze and go to watershed. So this watershed tool actually works two ways. You can either select a point in your area. It doesn't matter where it is. Could be anywhere it doesn't need to be connected to any road or any structure really and what that would do it is it would just try and analyze the contributory area to that particular point and give you a watershed area for that so once this is finished What this will give us is a polygon similar to that that you're seeing on the screen, where you have an area. You'll also see here that we've got some streams that it's generated, some high and low elevation, and so on. What you can do as well is you can set the hydrology method for this particular watershed. We have several options in here that are available to you. You can use user-defined, rational, or regression. So if you want to select rational, for instance, what you can do is you can set the um, hydrology coefficient in there. For instance, we want to use 0.20, as well as the rainfall intensity. So we can maybe say that's 200 millimeters per hour for this particular area and hit OK. Additionally, what you can also do is if you've already laid out the road, so I'm just going to switch to another proposal here where we've laid out the road design. So what we can do is we can do a watershed analysis for that component road. As you select that road, it will give you the option to either select a region by selecting the um, stations where you want the analysis to start and end, or you can just hit enter and that would analyze the whole road for you. All right, so as you can see here, it will point you the exact location in your road where a stream actually crosses. If we select that watershed, again, we can set the hydrology method in there that you'd want to use. I'm just going to copy the one that we had previously. So 0.20 runoff coefficient and maybe 200 rainfall intensity um, for every 100 year event and hit OK. What you can also do here is manage and assign your rainfall content. You'll notice that we have some predefined rainfall content available for you to use. We have ANZ, Polynomial, and a few others available. If you double click that, you can actually review the information available there. And it will also give you the option to manually change and update these values here on this table. However, what I actually like doing is exporting these out as templates and updating that with more accurate information from Bureau of Meteorology. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we'll just export this out to an InfraWorks template. You'll see that I have just pre-done that a while ago. And as you hit save, 
that would just save it as a CSV. Now, what that would look like is something similar to this one. that you can then easily update with information that you can gather from, you know, your Bureau of Meteorology and any um, similar organizations. Once you're happy, you can just hit save. And import that back in InfraWorks. Review that. Hit OK. So that's the newly imported um, rainfall data that we have. So we'll just make sure that it actually uses that, that as default. And said, well, I'll just rename it as such. All right. So as a result of our watershed analysis, we can actually see that we have a stream that crosses our road in here. And we just wanna make sure that that water actually has a place to go and doesn't pond our area in here. So what we'll do is we'll add a culvert. Now to add a culvert, we have two options. We can either go to the create tab and manually digitize our culvert in here as such. But I'm gonna backtrack from that. What I'm gonna show you here is how to let InfraWorks do that job for us. So as you select your road, hit right click and select add culverts. What this would do is it would add a culvert to any intersections with streams in our road. And it will also make sure that that is sized against our one in 100 event that we have um, set up in our watershed, right? You'll see here that we have some relevant information available to us, some upstream and downstream elevations in here for our headwater. Um, we have depth as well as velocity available in here as well. Now, there are a lot of um, parameters in here that we can control for this culvert. Uh, we have the option to either manually change them here on the table or on the map as well. So you'll see here that I can actually control this flare angle in here. And as I do so, that would change that design for us as well. Additionally, um, I can see here, for instance, that my velocity is quite um, high and I wanna try and slow that down. So what we can do is we can change a few things in here. So maybe we can look at, you know, changing the shape of our culvert in here from a circular to a box and see how that affects our velocity. It's actually done that really well. So we've managed to lower that down. Or maybe we can you know, go back to circular and try and play up with the number of barrels that we have. So at the moment, we just have one. We'll try and maybe say add three in there. And you'll see the effect that that has in our culvert. A few other things that you can look here and control are, you know, the materials as well as the Manning's coefficient. As you change the material, the Manning's coefficient will actually automatically change in there for you as well. And if you wanna change that manually, you also have the option to do so. So I'm, for now, I'm just gonna go back to concrete and use that instead. And if you wanna see the report for this particular culvert that you have a preliminary design on, you can just hit this report button. And what this would do is it would launch a HTML report for you for your design that you can give to 
the relevant stakeholders. Now that we have our call for design work out of the way, we can now switch our focus to creating our drainage network. Now, similar to our culvert, we have two options to set up our drainage network as well. We can either manually digitize that, or we can also just let InfoWorks do the heavy lifting for us. And that's what we're gonna do. So we'll select the road, go to drainage, and if you do have some curb available to your uh, road assembly, the add drainage network tool will be available for you to use. Now, as you hit that, it will give you this um, settings window in here where you can control some parameters to the drainage that it will generate. So we'll just call this Marina Drainage Network can select the types of inlet, manhole, and pipes that it would use by default. And you can use the library in here to select from some predefined um, components. So if, for instance, we select that. change the sizing, as well as the manholes. I'm happy with that, so we'll just leave it as is. Pipe, and so on. So as we hit enter, you should see the drainage network appear here in our road. So let me just try and zoom in and go underneath our surface here to try and find our newly created drainage area. All right, so that's actually done that nicely. You'll see our inlets and our manholes appearing from our road in here. And as you select them, can control the um, parameters of it some more and change them accordingly. Um, and if you go underneath the surface here to have a look, um, you can actually see what that's created for us. Now, if we want to make sure that our pipe network is actually properly sized, at least for preliminary design um, aspect of it, uh, what we can do is select a road, go to drainage, and click size drainage network. If we, for instance, want to size it against a 1 in 50 rainfall event, we can select that and hit enter. And what that would do is we'll just adjust the dimensions of our uh, drainage network in here to make sure that we're actually catering for that sort of event. A few other things you can do here. You can go to your road and calculate your material quantities in here. I'm just going to select that and you'll see here that you can actually see how many um, pipes you would require, how long they would be, how many inlets, and holes, and so on. Moreover, if you want to have a look at the profile of your road and see your utilities accordingly, you can hit profile view. I'll just make sure that things are turned on in here. And let's just zoom in to our area. All right, so you'll see here. Just try and find that 
on our map. So that's where it is. You'll see that we actually do have some structures underneath and it's reflecting in here. You'll see our manhole in here with our pipe displayed in gray. And lastly, if you want to inspect the performance of your drainage network in here, you can just click Inspect Performance from the Analyze tab. Select your pipe connectors in here, maybe from there to there. And maybe you want to analyze it against the 1 in 50, for instance. Hit Enter. You'll notice here that we have a visual representation here of our EGL, HGL up on our map. So I'm relatively happy with the design that we have here for a road in our drainage. So what we're going to do is we'll export this out to ZIMX and progress this to a detailed design in Civil 3D. So we'll just export to IMX. To simplify our export, we'll just select the polygon for our project. And put that in our location. Uh, mean road P1 and save. 